Hi. In the next videos, we're going to do a review of Bayesian filtering, since multiple object tracking is generally solved using Bayesian methods. So, what we aim for here is a review of filtering. You should already be familiar with Bayesian filtering. It's one of the prerequisites of this course. So that means recursive estimation, Bayesian statistics, Bayes theorem, linear and nonlinear filtering. Those are all concepts you should have covered in previous courses. You also need to be familiar with models for both the motion of objects and also the measurements from the objects. If you don't have this knowledge already, we strongly recommend taking the Chalmers X course Sensor Fusion and Nonlinear Filtering for Automotive Systems, since this course covers precisely these prerequisites. In Bayesian recursive filtering, there are two steps. The first step is the prediction, where we use the motion model to predict what happens from one time step to the next. So what's going to happen to the object? How does the object state evolve over time? The second step is the update step where we use measurements and the measurement model to update the object state densities. This means that we use the measurement information to update our knowledge about the object states. And uh, these two steps are iterated. We do a prediction and then we update, followed by a prediction, an update, and so on and so forth. So filtering for multiple object tracking is recursive. We repeat the same steps. Before we go into the details of Bayesian filtering, we need to introduce some notation. So first, we denote the time step by k. The object state is denoted by x with a subscript index k. So this simply means that we have the object state at time step k. And the measurement is denoted in a similar way. We have z with a subscript index k for time. Since we're going to track objects over time, we need to denote a sequence of measurements. And we do that by using z again, but this time with a subscript index that spans from some initial time step to some final time or latest time. So here the sequence starts at time step one, and we have a measurement up to and including time step tau. Posterior densities are denoted by p, and uh, for the sake of clarity, we have put sub-indexing on p here so that it is clear what density we refer to. Here we have the density for the state x at time k, given measurements from time one to time tau. However, if it is clear from context what density we mean, then uh, for the sake of brevity, we're going to skip this sub-indexing, as you can see here on the right-hand side of the equality sign. The expected value of uh, state x at time k given measurements up to time tau is denoted by x bar with the sub-indexing k given tau. And uh, lastly, if the PDF P is a Gaussian PDF, we denote the Gaussian PDF with a calligraphic N, and we have uh, the mean value x bar and the covariance matrix P, both with sub-indexing k given tau. So let's illustrate Bayesian filtering with a car example. We are interested in the state of the car, denoted by x, and uh, we use some sensor to get measurements of the car, illustrated by these red circles, denoted by z. So the task in Bayesian filtering is to use these measurements and filter them such that we can estimate the posterior density for the state of the object that we're interested in, that is, the state of the car. We start with some initial density, p of x1. Then we get a first measurement, so we do a measurement update and get p of x1 given z1. Now we can do a prediction to the next time step and get p of x2 given z1. We do a measurement update again, so we get p of x2 given z1 and z2. And uh, we then continue this procedure. We iterate the prediction and the update so that we get a sequence of these posterior densities for the object state given the measurements. To do Bayesian multi-object tracking, we need models for the multiple objects. Models for how they move, how they enter and leave the surveillance area, and we also need models for how the detector and the sensor works. Such multiple object motion models and multiple object measurement models partly build upon models for individual objects. So it makes sense, therefore, 
to study motion model that describes the motion of a single object. Likewise, a measurement model that describes what kind of detections or measurements we get from an object is needed. These object models are then integrated into the multi-object models. So we're going to talk more about the multi-object modeling later in this course. Next, we're going to look into the single object motion modeling and the single object measurement modeling.